All right, Dr. Monteith, University of Wyoming. Kevin, greetings. Greetings. Here we are, beautiful day, November 7th, 2019. Final captures of what has uh, been a culminating process of years of field work. And uh, Chopper bringing in a deer. Yeah, coming to an end. Sort of, sort of. For us, for us, it's just sort of. data as we as we go forward we're also entering into the subsequent chapter of the project where we're um, ratcheting down spending a lot of time racking our brains a lot of time behind computers data compilation analyses interpretation where we really begin to break things down and uh, seek to understand what's going on within this system what's happening with this cherished deer herd south rock springs and then beyond that how that matters for understanding ecology of of our deer populations within the West, within the context of, of our growing elk populations as well. Kevin, it's been a pretty unique project in that you've had this amount of time with these various years of weather impacts. How's this year so far with what you've seen compared to in the past? Month? Yeah, great question. And, and as many may know, we were actually, the initial intention was to actually stop about a year ago, but just given circumstances associated with the deer herd, themselves our success and also being able to get coyotes on air to understand how they fit within this puzzle and just weather conditions and those sorts of things the severe drought from two years ago we sought to extend that another year i'm very thankful we did unfortunately we've had the support and partners that have helped pony up to make that possible but this year has been very different and when we capture that variation that's what allows us to really understand the system better this year, above all others, we've had the best fawn survival that we've had since we initiated the project. Uh, and almost certainly, at least based on what we're seeing, probably uh, coincided with, with weather conditions, uh, quote unquote, severe winter that actually wasn't really severe for the animals, but probably certainly led to a bountiful forage forage growth. And then this fall, having the best fawn, fawn survival we've seen. And I think probably, we'll crunch the numbers, but probably some of the fattest animals that we've seen since the beginning of the project as well. Yeah, so from here, Kevin, uh, clearly a lot of uh, data that needs to be sorted through. Time frame where you, there's maybe a finished product to come out and say, this is what we've learned. Yeah, great question. That's always a tricky one to answer. And the unfortunate, and, and I, I get it as well from a scientist, like the unfortunate part about it is science always takes too long feels like it anyway um, but I think what we're going to begin to see is we're going to see pieces that are going to come out um, eventually we'll be able to kind of bundle that all together and see the the suite of products products that have come from the deer project but there's going to be pieces that will come as we go that should begin to uh, come to fruition through this winter so spring semester so between January and May there's going to be pieces that are coming out and we'll we'll continue to see that probably with for the next couple of years but at the same time with this project in general because of the massive amounts of very unique data actually I anticipate us leveraging that data for for years to come for many other pieces and different questions that we're going to be looking at but the heart of some of those questions a lot of it within the next year and then probably bleeding into the subsequent year after that. Kevin, how, how can you use and utilize this information that's been gained and captured and continue to be analyzed and have an application for it beyond this ecosystem, beyond the Cowboy State, just across West in general? Yeah, great question. And that's, as you often initiate a project, you have to decide where you're going to do it, right? And I think at the surface, it may always seem like, oh, well, you're just trying to understand what's going on with that deer population that lives in the greater Little Mountain ecosystem. but. If you zoom back out, if you captured an aerial image of the Greater Little Mountain area and then zoomed out and looked across the West, the reality is, is 
it's not unlike a lot of this high desert country that we have across the West and many of our mule deer populations that are gonna face similar challenges relative to habitat conditions, weather, um, face similar potential challenges associated with elk and the carnivore populations that reside there as well. So the notion then is when you zoom back out like that, you're addressing questions that sure are certainly relevant for this deer herd, but are relevant for deer herds across the West as we begin to disentangle the various pieces that push or pull on our on our Western deer populations. Well, Kevin, it's been a great experience so far and by no means is it over as you've indicated. Nope. Really the work begins now. Yep, yep. And, uh, absolutely. Can't thank you enough for the effort, the commitment, and your team for what you've been doing so far. Honestly, we're humbled to be able to play a small role within this and we certainly see that what we played is, is a small role. There's been a lot of a lot of people, a lot of partners, a lot of groups and individuals that have gotten behind it and, and made this work possible and um, can certainly promise that we're going to do our very best to uh, do all that effort justice to understand what's happening here and um, do the best to help conserve our mule deer populations into the future. Yeah, one thing you have been great about doing in the entire duration of this project is keeping people informed and having that information available in seasonal updates. Mm -hmm. You anticipate an update uh, to come from this season? Absolutely, yeah. Much, much more to come and those are perhaps going to maybe even increase in frequency and be much more product oriented as opposed to preliminary glimpses. Um, hopefully more more focused uh, in products associated with that. But absolutely, we don't anticipate that communication to wane at all. In fact, if anything, it may uptick, so. If there's an opportunity for folks to get involved or inquire or to continue to be engaged to this, best source for them to do that? Yeah, many, many possible ways to do that. Obviously, contact the Mealy Fanatic Foundation and you guys are really good at um, housing some of our information. We're pretty easy to track down as well. Um, just Google Monty Monty Shop uh, on the internet, and we're pretty. Our website's pretty easy to track down. It's also a Deer Project website. Uh, search Deer Project that can be found there, and we'll we'll continue to house some of those updates there as well. All right, Kevin. Again, thanks, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.